it's l here to do your mid december 2019 general reading so it is a general reading so it won't resonate with every aries who views the video but if it does resonate with you please like share comment subscribe to the channel it is much appreciated thank you to those who've already done so uh thank you to those who continue to support the channel go ahead and click that like button um what else if you want to schedule a personal reading all the the links to the website are below and the coupon codes if you want to take advantage of the coupons that uh, we have here that are on the website okay so aries i have taken the liberty of pulling the cards before you know off camera because um it does take quite some time Okay, so let's get into this. The top row is your partner's energy, whomever you're coming to the reading for, their energy, what they're going through, um, what they want to say to you, okay? Or what they want you to know, or what you should know about the situation. The second row is the advice for you, Aries, uh, via spirit in regards to dealing with this person. Then we have additional advice for your person and then for you. The bottom row is, um, this is uh, career and finance here, okay? Career and finance for the bottom row. And we have one clarifier. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into this, okay? So the person that you're coming to the reading for they have the lovers, the queen of water, the five of air, the six of water, seven of water, excuse me, and the nine of earth. Now they had two additional cards. No, one additional card come up. So nine of earth, seven of water, five of air, queen of water, the lovers. At the bottom of the deck is the ace of air. So just upon looking at this, your person is dealing with a situation where they're either married or they're in a commitment of some sort. It could be with the mother of their children. There could be children involved. There's a lot of drama, a lot of dramatics here in their current situation. They could be dealing with a Gemini or a Libra. Um... They have ideas of change, of changing their status, changing their scenery, changing the scenery of their own life. But at the same time, there's opposition and there's questions of, of motive and um, just really trying to make a collective decision, make a choice and then a decision. Um, your person, so children are involved. There's the element of money also being involved or the division of assets. Your person is emotionally frustrated and confused about what to do next, how to go about. It looks like they're more so okay with not making the decision, the complex decision, and allowing temporary fixes, allowing the, the temporary to take heed, to indulge. This card sometimes talks about the unfaithful spouse, the person who makes promises just to break them. They could be unfaithful to another or to you Aries or Aries you could be the unfaithful one and promises are either made to an outside party but they're never fulfilled because this is a person who is playing two positions there's a choice that they need to make about relationship about love love 
relationship. This dynamic is coming to them once again. It has been presented to them before. And I think they skated or skirted over it by way of just, once again, indulging, but never making a, a choice, a decision. The nine of earth sits here and looks like your person is coming into their own, wanting to be more independent, wanting to be single, wanting, because they, 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 they've learned something about themselves about the partnership either with you or the one that they're in that has obligation. Once again, so this card says enjoying life's little luxuries, right? The nine of earth or the nine of pentacles. Um, they may be successfully self-employed or something of that nature, but it sits next to the which can sometimes be deemed as the person who's keeping their options open, not making a decision, being unfaithful, making promises, living in a fantasy world. So this person may be at this point not making a decision, but, uh, shit. <laughs> okay, got the cards. Um, but willing to live in this, this fantasy with you, and not make a decision, enjoying the luxury of having two people, two women, two men, or too many. It could be you and someone else and the person they're obligated to. This could be a person who is not focused on making a decision, focused on making a choice, has many lovers, need, knows that they need to make a decision, knows that they need, know, they know that they need to make a choice, but it's easier to to patch patchwork my life is this is your person right this is how they're speaking my life is my romantic life is not what i want it to be instead of making some real changes or instituting some real uh problem solving um methods like maybe going to counseling or separation or divorce or whatever if, you, if they feel like they need to take it there instead of doing those things they say okay my my romantic life is not what i want it to be so i just need to go find something that brings me joy brings me fulfillment brings me where i am enjoying life's little luxuries whether that is another person gambling sexual addiction anything this person is looking for fixes, temporary fixes to a permanent problem. This is the problem. The heavy arguing. This is when someone can't get over. You know, this is the hump. This is, okay, something happened in the past. This, you know, we tried to, you know, smooth it over. But bam, we're here again, dealing with situations that are just not going anywhere. This could be addiction. This could be just toxicity altogether because it hasn't been dealt with. So your person says, okay, I'm not gonna do anything permanent. I'm just gonna go out and have as many women as I want. Uh, or I'm going to, you know, um, stay out, party a lot, whatever, drink, do anything to not have to do something, right? Uh, your person is having a challenging new beginning. Some of your people are in waiting. Like they're waiting for the other shoe to drop. They're waiting or they're trying to set up their, their release, their opportunity to leave. This is a challenging new start. And maybe they wanna tell you that like, there's an element of waiting here. I have to do this, do that. I'm trying to make sure that this, I'm trying to do blah, blah, blah. I Before I can actually move in the direction of you, Aries. And, and vice versa, you could be telling someone that. Okay. Your advice in regards to dealing with this person is the Hierophant, the Seven of Cups,
the Ten of Cups and the Star. Okay, so this is a destined relationship. At, you have the High Priestess at the bottom of the deck and then the Hierophant. So those are, you know, dynamics. This is a very spiritually connected relationship. You guys may be coming together because you have something to learn in this life. Not only do you have something to learn, but you have something to give to the universe. You, The relationship is significant also, not just for you, but for, for the, the outer world of your relationship with this person. Also, there's a dynamic of, um, of healing. You guys come together and... There's an, like you almost have known each other for lifetimes. What this person is dealing with, you can easily structure a resolution. And what you're dealing with, this person can easily help you through it. There's the element of, of spirituality being here. Like you guys are supposed to come together it's destined, it's written in the stars, it's supposed to happen, it's supposed to be on your path. The star talks about the right path because, once again, um, it's written in the stars. It's um, This person is going to help you deal with your issues too. The both of you have a seven of cups. The both of you... It's very, you you very much are skating over your own issues and wanting to delve into each other's lives and just kind of be together and not really focus on the sharing in a relationship. How you both are coming off is endorphins. Really, the feel-good endorphins of the relationship are taking more precedence than, you know, the tangible, the work that you guys can do together. This is the opportunity for you guys to come together and heal something deep within the both of you. There will be a lot of happiness between the both of you. But don't forget that there's going to be a lot of work to be done because this person is going to bring out in you what the reservations of, uh, of past and old hurts that you've repressed. The high priestess talks about um, repression and suppression and, um, you know, things hidden. So... This person is going to help you release. They're going to, it's like you guys are going to mirror each other. And, and, it, and also you're going to come to some healing aspect. So this is the advice of the cards. Do know that, do know this is going to take time. This person, one of you are more spiritual than the other. There might be an element of you both get to learn from each other. There's a learning, there's like a learning curve here, even in the relationship. Learn how to be, learn how to uh, really feel and go through those emotions and process them in relationships. Learn that what you see is what you get with a person. Do not live in the fantasy or uh being, being fanatical about something. The both of you are going to learn that. That's, this is a real good dynamic. So the both of you have relationships. Well, maybe you just chose the wrong person, right? And in choosing that wrong person, so much happens. So much hurt, so much pain. You either self-inflicted or the other person, blah, blah, blah. Everybody's got a story, right? So you move on past that person you or they, or, or they're in the process of doing so, or, or both, um, and you've kind of suppressed all of that hurt and that pain, you haven't really, really dealt with it. What these two cards say is that you guys are going to have to deal with it. 
and when you guys come together it's going to be like a, like them holding up a mirror at you and you holding a mirror up at them and you guys have to get past the fanatical stage the the fantasy the uh the illusion um or, or, or creating the false narrative you're really gonna have to get down to the nitty-gritty of um of healing that's what the star talks about because this is where you're supposed to be you go to the next level it's like getting a key to unlock to the next level in intimate relationships in marriage in sharing and caring this is the seven seven of cups it talks about relationships interpersonal uh dynamic how you come off to others and the sharing of like how do you share in relationships so this is good so they want you to know that the relationship is here for a reason your person may be having trouble getting out of a situation uh, let's jump into career and finance. So you have the Knight of Swords, the Three of Wands, and the Nine of Wands. Okay. And then the King of Wands at the bottom. Of so a lot of action. Action packed here. Some of you may be changing positions, changing jobs rather quickly. This is like when you have to give a week or two notice. Um, and then you, you start making long-term plans to be in a position here. You start building towards um, a more stable foundation. But then you go to looking back at some of you are wondering if you have enough knowledge to move forward in this current position. Wondering if you're doing enough. Wondering if it's too much trouble. How will you grow this? Um, if it's going to be too taxing for you. And some of you are, once again, looking back at where you left or what you left or uh, needing to learn more. This might even be like self-taught. So going to the Internet, right, and um, learning more or uh, what is it, online courses or some sort because you want to be the best. Um, you've been through a lot in your career and you just want to make sure that this is not a situation that's going to be stressful, uh, burdensome, and uh, that's going to add to the value of your life and not decrease. Some of you may even be looking at entrepreneurship. A lot of learning here, the page of swords under the king of wands. Some of you are trying to grow some aspect of like self-employment here um some of you are going you're doing a lot of research this is about people you're looking at relationship dynamics you may be a relationship coach or you coach people something of that nature you're growing something it looks very good because you're actively doing with the wands moving so some of you could be moving in a new direction career and finance uh, related you could be actually physically moving moving jobs moving in a, a better uh, a better scope of you're waiting for your your ships to come in you waiting for something to turn over you've done the work here with the three of wands um, it may be taking a, a while for things to turn over but you're definitely moving in that in that way in that position so this is very good Learn all that you can learn. Be curious. Be open to conversation, dialogue. Ask the probing questions. Do the research. If you have the idea, move on the idea. That's what the King of Wands does. He doesn't really wait for the opportunity to present itself. He has the idea. He moves on the idea. Okay, so additional advice for your person in regards to dealing with them. You they, So... They either want to give more information or they want to get more information from you in regards to how you feel about this connection. Or they know that you want more information. The only thing that's going to keep you around or keep you tied to this situation is knowing a bit more about it. You don't want to be in the dark. They may also feel like they need to get more information. Like I said, something about setting something up. 
like they're trying to set themselves up. They need to get more information about or set the other person up. I, I mean, hey, you know your life better than I do. Um, so then you, the additional advice for you is ask your angels. Yeah, if you feel like this is a spiritual connection, you feel like this is some twin flame soulmate, I don't really get into the labels. Ask your angels. It's a simple question. It's a simple prayer or affirmation, whatever you want to call it. But it's opening your mouth and ask, is this a spiritual connection? Thank you for your answer, God, whatever you believe in, universe. And you move on about your life. Okay? So, at the bottom of the deck, the between the both of you, you have a no answer. You see that? So we clarify our yes and no answers, and we have two clarifying cards. So we have the five of spades and the queen of wands or the queen of clubs, your, your energy. So the five of spades talks about reversal. We have the five of the air here. You 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 definitely want to make sure that there isn't an opportunity for something or, or you need to understand that so no reversal for you. You might have to once again talking about temporary fixes. So this person may want you to still be around still be with them even though they have not made any permanent changes right we have a no answer to that no if you've come out of that that uh love affair that that drama with this person then no don't go back to it know that you deserve better have the confidence to say no uh spread your wings and move in a new direction that's what the queen of clubs does. You need to understand that you can't go back and say no reversal for you. You can't go back to the old way of existing with this person. Stay in your ground. Set the necessary boundaries. And um, move forward. Be outgoing. Be charismatic. You know, you don't have to engage in that. And at the bottom of the playing cards deck is this three of pentacles. You don't have to engage in maybe, you know, this love affair. Um, something about legal ramifications. Also, your person may be telling you, well, you know, I've got these legal issues. So until I can do that and do this, I just need you to hang in there, hang on. Uh, there's going to be a lot of legal problems I'll have in, in regards to leaving this, this person or the family may bring up legal issues or or how will I communicate um, this to my family. Something about communication and, and, and the three, a third party. Uh, Aries, you don't have to participate in that if you don't want to. That's what the cards are saying. You don't have to Go back into that just because you know that this is a spiritual connection. You don't have to hang in there because you know that it looks like eventually you will be together. It may be time for separation so that this person can really get some things together. Okay. So Aries, this is um, very, very impactful for mid-December 2019. Uh I hope I said mid, but this is mid-December 2019 reading. Um, if you want to get your own personal reading, all the links are below. Thank you for being here. Take advantage of the two, the two coupon codes that are below if you want to get your own personal reading. You can also gift readings. Gift cards are in. Take advantage of those also. Um, lastly, okay, so... Stay tuned for the next phase of, of this reading. Um, it's called um, The Real Corner. So you get real, okay? 
Um, thank you for being here. Many uh, prayers and blessings to you. Uh, happy holidays if you celebrate around the world. Take care, guys. Hi, guys. So this is The Real with L. Okay. So a lot of times when you're looking at tarot card readings and you're getting tarot card readings done for yourself and you're getting psychic advice, that's spiritually based, right? Um, that's a lot of hope. That's a lot of prayer. That's a lot of manifestation. The real corner is practical advice and we can couple it with the advice of the Tarot or we can find a parallel. So the question is, what is the end game? A lot of times, if you've had a reading with me, you've heard me ask you this. When I get on the phone, when I am doing readings for other people, the question is, what is the end game here? What exactly do you want from this situation that you're in? More times than likely, I am dealing with a situation where there is a young lady, a young man who is a part of a third party. So this is the narrative somewhat similar to someone dealing with a third party. What is the end game? What do you want? What do, what, what, what do you desire? How do you feel about this connection, right? So if you say that your end game here is to be in a committed relationship with this person, whether you're dating them and you're not a third party or you are a third party or there are others involved, you need to know what you're after. When you enter a university, you know that you have upwards four years to get at least a bachelor's degree. And you know the end game, the end result here is the bachelor's degree. So you know what you're doing there. You know why you're there. For some of you, you need to ask yourself the question, what is the end game, okay? It once you decide what the end game is for you, you need to then implement some strategy. What's the strategy here in order to get your desired outcome? Then we need to talk about execution. What are you doing in order to get a desired result or, or outcome? Then we need to talk about results. What, it, what has resulted from your strategy, your execution? What are the results? You need to understand, a lot of you need to understand that sometimes um, you can't be so spiritually minded that you're earthly no good, right? Um, you need to have strategy, execution, and results in order to get exactly what it is you're looking for, whether it's a relationship, most of the times it is, um, or whether it's the, a job or starting a business or whatever. Um, I do have one little fun fact here. If you are in a third party situation, maybe you're dealing with a married person or you're dealing with a person who's committed do you know, statistically, the wife leaves the man? It is not the other way around. Statistically, the statistics are higher in regards to the woman leaving the man. What does that tell us about our strategy? That the strategy needs to somehow be formulated around, it needs to include the wife. Sounds a bit sinister, but... If this is what you want, you have to apply some practical, rational plan, okay? Do know, so how we couple this information with the Tarot, what is the end game? What do you want? What do you desire? What are your feelings? That would be the cups suit, the two of cups, the three of cups. Strategy would be the swords, seven of swords, a plan. Uh, eight of swords. Execution would be the wands. What are you doing in order to, what are you doing effort behind wh what you really want? What do you do uh, meticulously, uh, consistently? Results would be the pentacles. What have all of these things that you've done, your strategy and your execution, what has it resulted in? 
So, and, and, and this is a good way to have, to kind of, you know, maybe a checks and balance about yourself and about what it is you're doing in order to get the desired outcome. This could easy, easily be implemented for a business, uh, starting your own business, getting a job, um, reconciling with uh, long lost friends or family. What is it that you're doing in order to get a desired outcome? Now, we've only fashioned it in regards to maybe a third party here, but we can switch things around and make it useful to any aspect of your life. A lot of you, you have, once again, being realistic, rational, practical, ask yourself the question, what do I, or what do you have to offer that the other woman or man doesn't possess? This sets you apart. This is a part of your strategy. If you cannot readily answer that question and it be something uh, useful, then maybe you need to really dig deep into re in regards to what it is you really want here in, in this position. And once again, this could be implemented towards starting a business, reconciling anything. Um, for a lot of you out there who I get the question all the time, well, my guy tells me that he is super unhappy in his relationship, in his marriage. I don't understand why he just won't leave. I don't understand why he, you know, okay. Men and women are wired differently. Okay. Uh, mentally, emotionally, physically, all of that wired differently. Most men, when they deal with stressful situations, most men seek out temporary fixes to stressful situations. While women will seek out permanent fixes. An example, divorce or separation. We are looking at the permanent fixture to this problem. Okay? And for men, they're looking at a temporary fix. So their fix might be an extramarital affair. This may be the third party situation, hanging out with the friends, doing things that would increase uh, the, the feel good endorphins. Not necessarily that they fix the, the problem in its entirety, but definitely they have uh, brought a bit of joy into their life. And sometimes that joy is another person, is you, the third party, and, and and they can't see past the fact that you bring them joy in a joy joyless um um a, a very turbulent or stressful situation you are the missing piece to that puzzle so if you take that bit of information with you also you can then start to formulate a real hypothesis about what the hell is going on in your relationship with this person who is either committed or won't commit or still has options or whatnot, okay? Uh, once again, this can easily be fashioned to any aspect of your life, but I think this is good for a lot of you who are too far left on the spectrum in regards to um, spiritual and uh, uh twin flame and soulmate and when you're too far in the clouds sometimes you have to ground yourself with rational and practical advice here and we've coupled it and we've we've kind of instituted the tarot here okay all right so i hope that this helped you this little real corner with l uh we'll keep these going and um tell me how you feel about it all right Bye.